All right, we've got Python installed. We're relatively comfortable in our GUI environment. I'm going to take a few minutes in this next video here to show you a little bit about the mathematical underpinnings of Python. So I've got a script here on the left, episode3.py. We've made it available to you, and it's got a series of commands to run. These are pretty familiar mathematical operators we've got in the middle. Let's take a look at what they do. I'm going to go ahead and save it again and run F5. Nothing happens. Why is that? Well, it turns out we didn't give the console any reason to show us anything. So if I put a print command in front of each of these lines, you'll see that changes pretty quickly. Okay, let's try it again. All right. So, let's see what came out of here. Print 1 plus 2 looks like we wound up with 3. And that's about right. 3 minus 4. Negative 1. Okay. 5 times 6 over here comes out as 30. 7 divided by 8 now. 7 divided by 8 equal to 0. Now, that may surprise you. Not terribly intuitive there. And that's because Python is performing integer division. This is one of those differences between the Python 2 point, you know, x whatever, development branch and the Python 3 development branch is the way it treats integer division. All right, so let's take a look at how that integer division works. We saw that 7 into 8 is 0. In a similar way, 3 divided by 4 is 0. But 4 divided by 3 is going to return 1. So what's happening there? Looking at that, we want to say that 4 divided by 3 would give us 1 and 1 third. But what's happening is Python says, oh, you've given me two integers. You're performing division with integers, whole numbers, round numbers, like we like to say. And so I'm going to give you a whole number back. So 4 goes into 3 one whole times. And if we do something where we would round up, we'll say 5 into 3. Same thing returns 1 because you can only get 3 out of 5 one time, so to speak. So there's a couple things to be aware of here. One is if you're looking for decimal points, or what we would call floating point numbers in this Python environment, you can go ahead and give a floating point number as one of the inputs. So 5.0 divided by 3, ah, look at that. That's what we're used to. And if we do 45.0 divided by 3, it'll return 15.0. So it returns a float, coerces the output to float, even though we have uh, an even number at the end. And you could do it in the numerator or in the denominator. So we'll say 2 divided by 7.0. You get that nice decimal point. And beyond that, even if you want to just give the decimal point without a zero afterwards, it'll return the same thing. So Python is sensitive to the type of variable you're performing the operators on, and the output is going to look like the higher class at the input. So two integers will return an integer, an integer and a float will return a float, something to be very aware of there. And there's a counterpart to that integer division portion we showed you earlier. Three can go into five, but one time. But there's going to be a remainder there. Oh, pardon me. To find that remainder, you use what we call the modulo operator. It's going to return 2. So 5 divided by 3 is a result of 1 or a remainder of 2. Nothing too wacky and complicated there. Let's go once again to the output that we got right at the beginning from the operator. So now that we've looked at that integer division, we understand what's going on there. Next up, we have this caret operator, which intuitively to most of you in many other contexts, that's used for exponents. But here, it is used for something called the bitwise or. And we'll get to that later when we're dealing with a little bit more of the Boolean operators, the logical value type stuff. But be warned, this is not. I tell you again, this is not how you do an exponent in Python. This down here is how you do an exponent in Python. You got that double asterisk character. So uh, 11 to the 12th power returns this big old number over here. And if you're looking for something a little bit more comfortable scale, we can say 3 to the third power will give you 27 and 11 squared will return you 121. So those are some mathematical basics and a couple of pitfalls to watch out for. Be warned the caret is used differently here than you might have seen it elsewhere. And that division with integers will always return integers. And if you're looking for decimal results, you need to give it decimal input. So those are some very quick basics, things to be aware of, getting you comfortable with the mathematical underpinnings of Python. Again, this is Ed working for MyBringBack.com. Appreciate you spending some time with us. Keep coming back and watching these videos. We're going to pump your brain full of Python knowledge.